seemingly random selection of numbers until you realize that 17 was his college baseball jersey number, 82 was his high school jersey number, and 2011 was the year he graduated in. If this account was operated by a so-called enemy of Jay, they'd sure done their research. Jay, hey, I'll be very honest. I just, I want to know the truth. Yeah, no, I never even heard of that account. Okay. What is up, YouTube? It is your boy, Tish. She's coming back again with another video. And today, as you see by the title, well, first, I want to say thank you for tuning in and watching my video, or a video I'm reacting to, because it's not my video. Uh, well, my reaction to my video, but you get what I'm saying. Thank you for clicking on this video. Uh, we're going to be reacting to when cop realize they're going to jail. Let's get right into it. There are countless examples of corrupt, evil, and even criminal cops. But what happens to cops who actually get caught? These mm. are four examples of cops who realized they were going oh, to... Y'all can't see. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How do you get 263 years? Uh... I was gonna say 12 years is a lot. Then I seen 27, then 263. Bro, what did you do? Jail, starting with Tyler Moody, who oh, was about okay. to get the shock of his life after being brought into the interrogation room. Have you offered your resignation or not? I can keep my job and no. Well, you can't keep your job, okay? An inmate charged with murder was discovered with a mobile phone and charger. When questioned, Tyler immediately folded and confessed to what he'd done. He expected to just Bro, get so fired, but jail. he was about to discover providing contraband comes with a much bigger punishment. Of every citizen that we have the privilege to serve, and you've betrayed the trust of the brave and selfless men and women that you've worked alongside for nearly three years. So as of this moment, you're under arrest for bringing a prohibited item, a cell phone, into a correction facility. That's a third Providing a prisoner with a mobile phone carries a sentence of one year in prison. And that's exactly where Tyler is right now, serving it in exactly the same place that he used to patrol as a cop. Damn. But unlike Tyler, so he knows he is now. Lazarus didn't get off nearly as easy. Now you're accusing me of this? Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? After decades of investigation, okay, DNA evidence revealed that Stephanie was very likely the cul of a murder committed in 1986 because of the high stakes whoa, whoa, nature whoa. of the culprit of a murder committed in 1986 because of the okay. high stakes nature of the case the detectives made sure to meticulously plan this interrogation stephanie was a really successful detective herself and she had recently received recommendations for her good work on a theft case so the detectives used this and brought her in under the guise that they needed help with a case I don't want to talk about this in the squad room because okay. I, I don't know who people are listening. That's true. That's and if we go to my side, everybody's always wondering what everybody else is doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. An interrogation room is a strange place for such a conversation to take place. So to put her mind at ease, detectives told her this was the place they'd least be likely to be overheard, as the case details were strictly confidential. <laughs> Sherry Rasmussen's body had been found at her home after being shot three times. At the time, found police suspect at Sherry's house or Stephanie's house. Clear that up, because if it's found at a de at a de 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 if it's found oh come on metalleta if it's found at a detective house why would the body be there? Expected the murder was a result of a burglary gone wrong, but the case went cold when they couldn't identify the suspect. However, 23 years later, when revisiting the case, detectives found evidence that led them towards Stephanie, years. a girl who had been trapped in a love triangle with Sherry and her husband, John Rutten. So the detectives decided to bring up John's name to see how she'd react. Were you guys friends, close friends? Yeah, we're very close friends. Yeah. I mean, what's this all about? It's a case we're working on. It involves John, and in there, there's notes and stuff that he, that he knew you and stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, we good friends. Um lived in the dorms for I lived in the dorms for two years. Was there ever any relationship or anything to develop between you guys? Yeah, I mean we dated, uh, uh -huh. you know, um, I mean 
is what no, we don't know. About. Tell us more. It's relating to uh, his wife. Both the detectives and Stephanie have tried to seem as friendly and relaxed as possible around each other. But Stephanie is obviously starting to get very anxious at this point. Even though the detectives gave a somewhat believable excuse, she is now in an interrogation room faced by two detectives being questioned about a girl she supposedly murdered 20 years earlier. Her breathing has become faster and her language is defensive and her movements have become more erratic. And you're right. I mean, if you guys are claiming that I'm a suspect, then, you know, I, I got a problem with, you know, with that. Okay. Okay? So, you know, if you're... If Defensive. If you're doing interrogation, you're saying, hey, I'm a suspect. Well, I, now I got a problem with, you know, now you're accusing me of this? Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? Obviously, you know about all the DNA stuff and things of the nature that, you know, gets done on cases nowadays. You know, if we asked you for a, a DNA swab, would you be willing to give us one? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Now, 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 yeah, because now, now I'm thinking I probably need to talk to a lawyer. Stephanie chooses to provide DNA evidence, hoping her willingness to help out would, would ultimately prove lawyer, her innocence. If you but didn't do it. unfortunately for her, just five minutes later, the detectives decide they've heard enough and put her in cuffs. Months later, after a long and arduous trial, a decision was made by the jury. We, the jury, in above entitled action, find the defendant, Stephanie Eileen Lazarus, guilty of the crime of murder of Sherry Rasmussen. We further find the murder... 23 years later. 23 years later, you got... Karma gonna bite you. Karma gonna bite you. Was of the first degree. Stephanie was sentenced to 27 years in prison after being hit with a single felony charge of first degree angle. murder. But to this next cop, Jalen Fleer, a single felony charge looks like child's play. Can I ask, is this something I might, I should have lawyers on? In April 2020, San Diego police received tips that. that a man who Whenever you bring a lawyer or, <coughs> or attorney, I just like snitching on Two months of investigation led directly to Jalen and a mountain of questions that desperately needed answering. So I know that I have a lot to delve into, but I, I really want to get to know you first, if you don't yeah, mind. Definitely. Okay. So I'm gonna lean back and get comfortable, um, just because. Are you comfortable? Do you want to yeah, take off I'm your good. duty belt? No, I'm good. I'm okay. Good. Can you tell me a little bit about your upbringing? Yeah. So I will ask what this is about. Yeah. So we're looking into some allegations that were made. We're kind of it, it started with a Crime Stopper report, so we're just kind of okay. going from there. Um, uh, we did receive. See a sheriff. Um, a picture um, that, um, you know, when we looked into it, it looks similar to you. So I don't know mm. if you can take a look at the picture and just tell me if you've seen this picture before. Oh. Well, she like sees the picture, okay. As soon as the allegations are brought up, Jalen becomes visibly stressed. He leans forward tentatively in his chair, clasps his hands together softly, and clenches his jaw. It's obvious he's worried about whatever he's about to be shown. Oh yeah, he The detectives did. have made it clear he that he is not currently being detained and is free to leave at any time. However, she is making a noticeable effort to make him feel relaxed, using a bubbly and friendly persona to put him at ease. So this picture right here. Yeah, that's definitely me. I need to gross one. Okay, so um, this picture right here. How old were you when it was taken? He sent that to a girl. Uh, underage. Twenty. Twenty. Okay. She did somebody cool. underage. That makes it very easy. Um, so as far as like um, the picture, so um, this photo came up in connection with some allegations um, about you communicating with a younger female. I knew it. I knew it, bro. I knew it. Okay. Can I ask? Is this something I might? I should have lawyers on. Jalen is starting to seem more and more stressed. He begins to sway in his chair more and becomes more closed off with his answers. But the pressure he's feeling now is nothing compared to what the detective is about to lay on him. Uh -oh. um, so, you know, this, like I said, this photo was um, sent to this person, so they were in possession of it. And we can't find any connection or reason why this photo would end up with this particular person if it wasn't shared by someone you may know or yourself. I agree, yeah. I my wife would have done it, so I don't know why she would share that. So, well, along with the photo came hmm? some additional information about your personal life. Okay. Um, mm. And based on some of the information you shared with me today, it seems to add up. Okay. The account that shared the photo and the information. Oh, uh, we know. We gotta be know. LOL. He was my best man. Funny guy. Just gotta get to know him. 
I'm a lot when you want me to wrap my arms around you then. Ha <laughs> ha, JK, cringe. Nation was called J178211, a seemingly random selection of numbers, until you realize that 17 was his college baseball jersey number, 82 was his high school jersey number, and 2011 was the year he graduated in. If this account was operated by a so-called enemy of J, they'd sure done their research. Jay, hey, I'll breathe be very honest, I just, I want to know the truth. Yeah, no, I never even heard of that account. Okay. Have you ever shared any images of your p with anyone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And how many times would you say you've done that? A lot. Did you ever share any videos of you? Bro, so people just out here not making no money, just. They really just out here. Let me get the right angle. Come on, bro. You gotta be appropriate, man. You a police officer. Even if you didn't, even if you did that in the past, you gotta be right, man. That's not right, bro. Ain't seen that to underage, bro. That, I, I don't. I also say I don't condone that. I don't. But like, bro, that's morally not right in any way. Anyone? No, I've always had personal. Come on, videos. man. I know you can be better than that. And my ex actually had one, but... then rightly decides that he's already answered enough of the detective's questions and asks him for a lawyer. However, unfortunately for him, he's quickly handed a search warrant, allowing the police to seize DNA, his phone, and his car. Police used this to gather a mountain of evidence against Jalen and, just a few weeks later, turned himself in. Jalen was charged with 20 felonies, including engaging in lewd acts with children under the age of 14, pandering children under 16, and engaging in the child under the age of 16. A few months later, he was sentenced to 12 years in prison. But this... Bro got 20 felonies and got 12 years in prison? 20 felonies, right? 20 felonies and got 12 years in prison for messing with children. He got 12 years on 20 felonies. Twelve years for twenty felonies. This disturbing act doesn't even compare to the atrocities that Daniel Holtzclaw committed. What did Daniel do? Daniel was brought in for interrogation after a report came in that he'd made an unlawful traffic stop and forced the female driver to remove her clothing and perform on him. What Bro, detectives wait. didn't know was that this was just one of dozens of other crimes that Daniel would find himself accused of. Hey, once so you go black, you never go no back, but oh my goodness, bro. Because, and maybe I didn't key in on some things, I want you to, you turn in your activity card, walk me through it all again. Turn my activity card, I leave out station, turn off my computer, done for the night, head left, go westbound on 50th okay. from Prospect. About block down, I see a Grand Grand Prix in the outside lane, I was on the inside lane. Directly in front of me, car swerved at that time. I kind of fall behind of it, Lincoln. I didn't want to light it up at the, at the stop sign, so I waited till it go forward and just lit it up just to the west. And then that's when I made a traffic stop. Daniel recounts his version of events from that night. Cops said that he didn't report on the stop dispatch, run a records check on the driver, or even let them know that he just logged off for the night. But Daniel just explains that everything happened so fast he just forgot to do all of that and Cal, made the traffic stop off the grid. However, Daniel doesn't seem 100% sure while recounting this evening. He takes unusually long breaks between statements and speaks in incomplete sentences. The true reality of cases is that it's almost usually impossible to get a conviction as long as there was no video or photo evidence of the event. The victim barely ever has any ability to prove oh that the suspect did what they did, as in most it. places, they are innocent until proven guilty. This is likely why this turned out to be one of 36 charges eventually brought against Daniel, each more disgusting. 36. 36 charges working for the police department. Than the last. CSI is processing. Every ticket I've ever had, I want it dismissed. 
And right when now. we stepped out. Right now. They found some pubic hairs right in here. Could they be yours? No, that's not. I didn't pull my. I didn't do anything out there. Did she? No. But she you think it could be? No, it's not. No. Nothing on mine. Your pubes couldn't be? No. Right there? No. You seem a little extra worried whenever you talk about Bro's in a tight movies. spot. He's claustrophobic. That's mm. why you're worried. You sure she just didn't flash you? I can't. She did not fly. I, I don't want to say I can't recall, but I'm pretty positive she didn't flash well, I see a pair of titties. She, go, I'm she went like this, but nothing as far as I'm going like crazy looking. Lifting, lifting the shirt. I'm, no. This whole situation and... It's, just, it's kind of scary. It I is scary, it. and I don't like. I don't want my rep to be. Everything's about. And Bro, you might go down. Three years on, I know that, but everything's about your rep. Absolutely. And I don't want this to fall on my rep. Unfortunately for Daniel, though, this absolutely would affect his rep, as the DNA tests on the hair found in the car came back as a perfect match, mm. and statements given by his girlfriend directly contradicted his story. So after the interrogation, he was placed on administrative leave, but just two months later, 12 more women came forward with claims, and he was subsequently arrested. Verdict, count one, battery. Defendant is guilty of the crime as battery and set punishment at eight years. Count two, procuring lewd exhibition. Not guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition. Count mm. three, burglary in the first degree. Defendant is burglary. not guilty of the crime of burglary in the first degree, nor lesser included. Count four, procuring lewd exhibition. Defendant is guilty Bro, of the like crime of procuring lewd exhibition and punishment is set at five years. Bro, literally Daniel abuse was found power. guilty on 18 of the 36 charges and sentenced to 263 years in prison. Mm. Two hundred years. Somebody go let their brother know COVID over. He probably don't even know. Somebody go let him know COVID over. Somebody go let him know that we're not on lockdown no more. He probably doesn't know. Oh my gosh, it's sad. I don't even feel bad for him. He did all that to them. To, to my people? My African-American people? He did that to my, my brothers and sisters? Affected their families? No sympathy. Nah, but oh, honestly... Bro, that's, that's wrong. You don't do that to people, bro. Like, he, he got a mom. Like, imagine somebody did that to his mom. Comment down below what y'all think. I hope, um, whether it's good or bad. Let me know. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I hope you have more for today. Make sure you go give somebody a hug because they need it. Tell them you love them. Everything. Just don't touch them wrongly. Uh, make sure you have their consent. Always say permission to initiate contact before you hug somebody and shake their hand. Uh, but yeah, make sure you have a wonderful day. Take a signing out. Peace.